Hi friends, welcome back. This is week two of the Overtime Podcast. Um, for anybody that's new, this is a husband-wife podcast where I'm the idiot that knows nothing about sports, and he's the idiot that knows a lot about sports. Well, at least football. Wow, some. I was just say at least football. Um, we just sort of talk about, try to talk about a little bit of everything. Um, we are NFL-centric, WWE-centric. We have a whole, a whole segment of WWE stuff that we talk about. Um, so yeah, if you're coming back for the second week, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. Actually, I don't think I did it last week, but I'm going to go ahead and do the plug-in again this week. Um, you want to watch it live, it's on twitch.tv slash Murdoch Gamer. That is my Twitch. Now, my YouTube is different. If you want to watch the VOD, which Alex kind of forgot to upload last weekend... Which I have something okay. to say about that, actually. It's okay. Um, <laughs> it's uploaded on Friday. So we're recording on a Wednesday, uploading on a Friday. Spotify will be on a Friday around 7 or 6. I haven't, we haven't really I thought I discussed did the, that. I thought I, I, did, it, I thought I did the Spotify on Thursday morning. No, no it was Friday, I thought. I'll have to look. Uh, either way, okay. it's gonna. I think we should up it to six a.m. That way, That's people fine. can listen to it as they're going to work. Um. So yeah, either way, it's gonna be up. Well, on six. What so. I was gonna say is, do you have an issue with it being sp- a Spotify exclusive for like six or twelve hours, and then it gets uploaded onto YouTube? Well, that's whatever. But okay. as long as it's, as long as it's uploaded in the morning for the for the okay. There you have it, guys. It'll be uploaded Friday. Yeah, my YouTube is Murdoch Gaming. It's not Murdoch Gamers, Murdoch Gaming. Just wanted to clarify, because that... I can add... I'll add some things in there for our, our listeners. Or I guess... Yeah. I guess for... Yeah. I don't know if you could add that to Spotify. That's why I was just plugging that I in. I should be able to. I don't to. know I'll if there's like a link. There's a link or nothing. I'll look. So. All right. We're going to try and keep it a little bit shorter than we did last week. Last week, obviously, it was our test week, if you want to call it that. Um, so I've tried to shorten it down a little bit. I I think we'll be okay this week. I think from here on out, we'll be, we'll be good with time. Because we've already gone over a huge injury list. This week, I only have one person on our injury list. So, well, technically two. But we're not going to talk about the one during the injury part. We're going to talk about the one before that. Um, so, all right. You ready to do the our little articles? Mm-hmm. I tried to keep keep them. So first thing I have, obviously, is... Uh, how do you say his name? Ricky per- Purcell? Purcell. Okay. Yeah, Ricky Purcell. Obviously, I think just about everybody's heard what's happened to him. What happened? Oh, he's out for right. four, he's out for four weeks. <laughs> so yeah, that's a that's a big one. I was just talking about him last week. Um, so I might have a new rule set on this podcast where I don't talk about any 49er player ever that I like, because what happened last year was I talked about Tank Dell and how I liked him. He literally gets injured five minutes after I said that. <laughs> he did. Oh, so, I'm about done saying things players about the Niners. <laughs> Well, no, Tank Dell was on the Houston Texans, but like oh, I, I'm just right. tired of saying I like players because if I tell the tell somebody I like them, next get, thing you know they, they get, get injured. <laughs> so last week I did say I like Ricky Purcell. He gets shot. I think he got shot twice. I didn't really fully read the article, but like that's just heartbreaking. Like why? First off, don't steal. Like Jesus Lord, how hard is it not to steal something? Like, Very. but. I mean, and, and <sighs> Shannon Shannon Sharp said something. I, I don't want to, like, disagree with him. I'm, like, 50-50 with him, where he says, hey, you know, I used to walk around with 10 bands in my pocket at all times, you know. I, at some point, I realized it's probably a bad idea. Okay, 12000 or $10,000 in your pocket, that's different than wearing a Rolex, Okay. Listen, I'm not the guy. I'm, the, I'm probably not going to ever become rich. But if I do, if I want to wear a fucking Rolex, I should be able to wear a Rolex. Exactly, yeah. Be worried about getting 
stolen. Yes. So like, I I I want to throw that completely out the window. Just don't steal, dude. Like, it's, it's just don't steal. And but I understand where he's coming from, because that's the world we live in, and yeah, it's kind of yeah, sad. Yeah. But but the fact of the matter is, it's bullshit. It is. Like, you know, you I, I just I don't feel. Like, it's right that you can be like, oh, you shouldn't be wearing that or you shouldn't fight for your life over that. Because in theory, just in theory, I'm not saying anything. I don't know how to word this. Let's say that Rolex came from his great grandfather or something. Right. Yeah. And you're going to sit there and tell somebody not to fight over that. I'm going to. Yeah, that's yeah. Now, if it's just a regular Rolex, sure, whatever, whatever, you can buy another one. But like that's not the that's not the point. Still, like the point is, that's his Rolex. That's Ricky's Rolex. Yeah, he should be allowed to wear it and not fear that he's going to get robbed, let alone so, shot. Uh, <laughs> so that's all I wanted to say about that. Uh, he's doing well. He's doing very so well. <laughs> he was already in the the weight room the next day. for forty eight hours. That's I think insane. it was insane. Meanwhile, I get Which, out of bed wrong and I can't function for. 48 hours. <laughs> well, sometimes you don't even look like you get out of bed, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of the 49ers, uh, I have Ayuk's contract. I don't know if there's a whole lot to really say about that, just that he finally signed one, but. And he did mention that he made it a little bit more difficult in the end, which he did. Okay, so I can respect him for that then. Yeah, absolutely. Like, man, maybe yeah, I should have. trying to get the bag, but that's, you I get know. It. You gotta, if you want to win championships, you're gonna have to make sacrifices. Tom Brady's done it. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, some of the 49ers even did it. I mean, for the love of God. Yeah. Um, I... But also, Trent did sign. I don't know if you wrote that down, but while we're on the Brandon IU contract, I'll just go ahead and say Trent. I don't He have resigned. That. He negotiated his contract, and he said he felt more obligated to do it now after the Ricky incident, which. Listen, Trent, you're a big man. I love you, dog. You're probably the best lineman to ever play the game. I think in the last four years, he's only let one sack really happen. So, Trent, glad you could stay on the team. Um, This is going to be an unpopular opinion, I'm sure. But the 49ers, if they were smart, I would have signed Trent before Brandon. Just saying. Oh, I can't say I Brandon Ayuk's. Stats are incredible. They're, I mean, they're off the board incredible. I'm not going to knock Brandon Ayuk, his stats. But Trent Williams is your offense. He's an absolute animal out there. And if you got, just, just look up Trent Williams' clips, dude. Like, that's all you need. So, you ain't going to have a good quarterback if you don't have a decent line. Right. Plain and simple. So, give. Brock Purdy some time in that pocket. Trent Williams is your go-to guy. I know he's getting injured lately, but hopefully he can hang in there. All right. Uh, next uh, thing I have is about Reggie, the Reggie Bush trophy. His Heisman. Oh, Heisman. Yeah. They finally got his Heisman. So, he, I mean, he's been fighting for years for that. I was so – I'm so fucking pumped. I totally forgot about that. That was uh, – <laughs> I don't know when he down. actually got it. <laughs> I, I forgot, uh, I, w- I was so worried about the watching the Penn State game, uh, and I heard about it, and I was like, oh my god, you know, holy shit. Like, Reggie Bush is hands down one of the best running backs in the new era. Like, he is absolutely, he was absolutely incredible. I remember uh, there was a game, he was running down the sideline 23 miles an hour. Dude, that's fucking fast. Jumping from the five yard line over two players to score a touch. Like this this guy was incredible. So in order for him to get his highs and back, I'm so fucking thankful. Cause what the players are doing now is what he was doing, so there shouldn't have been any conflict yeah. there. I understand there was, yes, whatever. I wasn't supposed to do it then, but you're doing it now, so give him the fucking Heisman. They finally let him have it. I'm just Hallelujah. <laughs> give that man his trophy. So, so uh, I don't quite know what exactly you wanted to talk about with Caitlin Clark. Um, I pulled up her stats, though. 
at least some of her stats. I didn't know if there was something specific you wanted to just talk about her and Angel Reese or Well, there there's then this debate about rookie of the year. And I, I don't know okay. why there's even a debate about it. Caitlin Clark right now is hands down rookie of the year. I mean She was rookie yes, of the year last year and she wasn't even in. <laughs> she has Angel Reese has some double doubles and stuff, but she's not they're not winning games. The double doubles is not winning the games. Caitlin Clark is almost I don't want to say single handedly, so I that I don't, don't want to make it sound like that, but Caitlin Clark's winning the games. Yeah. She's breaking records. Yeah. She's literally doing everything she can. I think she just broke the most assist and most three pointers um this season. For a rookie player? Well, it, so, says, it says she's averaging 18.7 points and a league-leading 8.4 assists. What she's at right now. League-leading. Like, league-leading, yeah. That, let's, let's use that as fire there. League-leading. Not rookie-leading. League. That's a lot of assists. That's giving your team the chance it, to fucking well, score. It says here, too, earlier Clark set the rookie season assist record. So, and she's on that's pace. What I was saying. She's on pace to break the overall assist record. So that's pretty damn, yeah. That's pretty impressive. Now, uh, why is there even a debate about yeah. Kaylin Clark winning Rookie of the Year? It, I mean, they just handed her trophy now as long as she don't get hurt. Yeah, see, that's the issue, and that's with every sport. <laughs> but I mean, even even if she would, let's say, get hurt, dude, she's already broke two records. Yeah. She's leading the league in assist. Her average point, you said, was 18.6. I mean, you could bring it up if you had to. But, like, what, are you fucking kidding me? How are you not... I don't know. I just... I'm not knocking Angel Reese by any means. But right now, it's it's over. Like, she should have Rookie of the Year. There should be no doubt. As long Again, as long as she keeps up her good work. Right. Which she's getting a lot of attention towards the WNBA, oh, yeah. and I just don't understand. I just don't understand the hate. Like that's that's the problem with women's sports. Is Kaylin Clark comes in there, she's doing fantastic, and you want to hate on her for bringing light to your sport. Like, yeah, I don't. It, you get paid by how many views you have. It's the same thing with Twitch, YouTube, anything. Okay, if uh, if a program on CBS is not getting views, they cut the fucking program, dude. Yeah, that's well, just how. I mean, that's literally be, what it is. So, to be fair, though, even when it does get views, they cut it too. I don't understand their logic. There are so many shows out there. For instance, like Netflix. Netflix is notorious for it. They put a really good show on. It's a great show. Everyone's watching it, and then they're like, mm, we're not going to do it anymore. Oh, like, why? Why? Sometimes sometimes it's budgeting issues, but in sports, that's not the issue. Right. They're going to always have. They're always going to have yes. that, but you've got to have the views. Yes. So bringing light to your sport and you want to hate her, she, I'm just saying, she, she deserves Rookie of the Year. Keeps I, it up. So I, I just don't I don't see the debate right now. I don't see the debate, and I was like I was getting a little irritated because it's like you read her stats. Can you just read her go through all her stats right now or no? Uh, it's kind of peppered. What that article says. It's peppered into the article. I will say this that stood out to me. Let me find it. What the hell was it? Oh, right here. Um. Caitlin Clark scored or assisted on 37.3% of the Fever's points this season. That will be a WNBA record if she stays there. If she continues to up, uphold that percentage, she will break a record. Another record. Another record, record yeah. Unbelievable. And where's, like, again, why is there, I don't know. Why is there, just, uh, yeah. Why is there a debate? Yeah, she's damn good. She's a damn good basketball player. So, all right, moving on. <laughs> this one's not going to be a whole lot to talk about. It just stood out to me because it's bas It's another basketball one. Warrior Stephen Curry signs one year, sixty-two point six million extension. Holy <laughs> smokes! That's what I said. With the Warriors. With the Warriors. Yep. 
he better get a team behind him then because he's not, I mean, Draymond Green shouldn't even be in the league. I mean, he's just a bully on the court. He'll punch people on the court. Like, <laughs> like if you're ever betting, okay, and it, and you come across an NBA, an NBA game, and you got Draymond Green on there, if it says boxing match in the middle of an NBA game, go ahead and just put all your money on Draymond Green because it's going to happen. <laughs> you know, because he just, he doesn't play basketball. To me, he doesn't play basketball anymore. He just he fights. Was, well, he got suspended twice last year, and it's just, I, I, Curry needs a team behind him. Clay Thompson, we don't want to forget, he dropped zero points in the playoff, one of his playoff games this year. So it's like, you're, Clay, you're supposed to be a star player, and you do that? Right. Steph needs some fucking help. I mean, and I, I'm not, I'm not familiar a lot with basketball, if they signed any other players. To the Warriors. So. Um, it does say here, uh, Curry36 has been vocal about his desire to remain with the Warriors. The only franchise he's ever played for and retire with them. Uh, apparently, and I didn't know this. After their, th their well, he's 36 now. But if you're going to be 38 years or older. <laughs> NBA Ooh. has an over 38 rule, which prevents teams from offering contracts of four years or more to players who are or will be 38 years old during the deal. So I bet huh. you he's just going to stay with the Warriors and just keep signing one year contracts. Probably. Which they would, honestly, I, I don't know a whole lot about basketball, but I know, well, Stephen, I, mean... I know who Stephen Curry is. Like, I know Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, LeBron. Like, I know. What? Steven. <laughs> Nothing. It's Just... Stefan, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway. What uh, did I say at the beginning? You got an idiot that knows nothing about sports. <laughs> anyway, th the thing is with Curry, though, and I I'm not going to knock LeBron at all, but once you get to, like, 38, I understand that contract rule because once you get to 38, you're, like, you're getting there. Yeah, you are. LeBron... You're... <sighs> I think it's cool LeBron plays with I know I'm getting off subject here. LeBron's playing with his boy and everything, but, like, dude, it's... Yeah, it's kind of cool. Like, that's a, a neat... Yeah. I I don't... I don't know. I used to like LeBron, but now I'm just getting tired. Cause like, <laughs> he flops. He flops a lot. He's trying to learn how to do this flopping bullshit, and he's just... He's a crybaby. Look, crybaby is what I like to call him. I mean... Actually, you hear me say LeBron James all the time, but LeBron James. But it's just getting to the point where he's he should just be done. Well, personally, should happen. So. Um. Okay, we're gonna try kind of change it up a bit. So this is something that we're only gonna do one time because I want to get it out of the way before they announce it. I thought about it on my way home from work, and I said, "Oh, that would be something we could talk about real quick." So I want your opinion, Chris, on who you think is going to be the the Super Bowl halftime show. <laughs> How the fuck am I, bro? Listen, <laughs> when it comes to all right, podcast, listen up. When it comes to sports season, when it's NFL season, I got NFL Red Zone. We're about to drop three hundred forty dollars on a box, so I can get any game in the world. My my thing with the sports is that's all I watch. So I don't know what Taylor Swift's up to. I don't know. I I don't know what fucking Justin Bieber's up to, or Justin Timberlake, or NSYNC, or any of these it's fucking bands are up the to. Tour. The only one, the only one that I actually keep up with, besides sports, is Mr. Eminem himself. That's the only guy I care about because he drops albums. His album, his last album was dope. So I don't know who the fuck's going to play at the halftime okay, show. Okay. Maybe the fucking Teletubbies come out. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm i all for halftime shows. But, like, I want I want them to come back out. I don't even know who played last year. <laughs> it was Usher last year, because my man Luda was All right, was you see what I'm saying? I don't even know. <laughs> the only thing I remember from last year was Ludacris coming 
um, Mercedes Benz Stadium for the Falcons because he's a Falcons fan. He came down from the oh, ceiling yeah. upside down. Like that's the only thing I remember, and that wasn't even that wasn't even the Super Bowl. That was just that was just a, that was just a game. Like so, who the fuck's gonna play at halftime show? I think you know what, Barney's coming out. All right, I can Power be- Rangers. I was gonna say who I was gonna say who would out. you like to do the halftime show this year? Eminem. I, uh, okay. Right, I, I, Eminem just does every single halftime that's ever. All right. So I have I have two theories, real quick. Personally, I know the rumor was Miley Cyrus. I do think that oh. that's gonna happen. I do think that's gonna happen. However, I got to thinking today. I don't know how many people are aware because I know a lot of people aren't you know, necessarily big fans. But Lincoln Park started a timer. They're making a big announcement tomorrow. Now, it has been about semi confirmed that they're just getting a new singer. They're getting a new singer to front Lincoln Park since Chester. Yeah, Park. I heard this. But, but what if they're going to be the halftime performers? What? <laughs> I think it's a good what, theory. So everyone, in, so everyone in the arena don't even know who they are? <laughs> like, Fuck off. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Listen, I, I like Lincoln Park. I'm not knocking Lincoln Park. <laughs> but, like, they're getting, I mean. I'm just going to say this. I don't want to say outdated. But. I'm just, well, that, no. Now, listen, I heard a theory that the halftime show is people that are past their peak. Lincoln Park would technically be past their peak. Real Queen. Big, I'd be okay with Queen. No, Queen is not a bad answer. Queen is not a bad answer. They, but, they barely had a peak, but yeah, go ahead. Shut up. But I'm gonna get hate for that do, one. Do I think Lincoln Park? It's going to be Lincoln Park. No, but don't say I didn't tell you so when it comes true. <laughs> I'm still sticking to the Teletubbies, which well, if it's Lincoln Park would be the same thing. Whatever. <laughs> okay, now moving on, now that we got that out of the way. The only injury I have for this week is Dion Jennings from the Ravens. He's the only one that really stood out to me. But I don't know if Chris has any more that he happened to see or because like I said, I looked at everything that was that was like in September at least. I looked at all the September dates and I didn't see anything that a lot of questionables, which don't get me wrong, like you said, that is important, but there was no one that stood out to me either. So I mean, he might be an impact being injured, but well, how long is he, did it say how long he's out for? It just said Jennings undisclosed was placed on injury reserve by the Ravens on Tuesday. Oh, injury reserve. Yeah, that's... So he's out. I, I guess, yeah. I... Well, injury reserve, he's out. Like, he's out for probably a season. I oh, think shit. towards the end of the season, they can switch off their IR. Okay. I, think that... I can't remember how that actually works. Guys, you got to remember, I I played football for 13 years. I've wrestled for four, ran track for three. So I know some of my sports, but there's some rules in the NFL that's like... That you just don't understand Weird. the, yeah. So, like, like the all oh, the IR. I remember uh, a couple of years ago, somebody was on IR, but then they came back. But it was, like, towards the end of the season. So, I don't know how that even works. I don't know if there's, like, a deadline for that or or what. Some kind of uh, time time thing, yeah. <clears throat> um, Yeah, that was the only injury I saw. I, I Like I said, I don't know if there was any anybody else you saw. or uh, just besides Purcell, I mean. Well, and like I said, we already talked about him. So, um, okay, so this is going to be another new thing. This is going to be an every week thing we're going to do. I have every game of the upcoming NFL schedule up on my computer, and I have written down which team I think is going to win. But we're going to do a little flash game. Chris is going to tell me real quick. It's going to be real quick, Chris. You tell me which team. Super quick. I got to say why, don't I? Well, now hold on. You just tell me the team, and everyone that I got wrong, I'm going to highlight. And if there's only a few, we'll talk about them. We'll talk about maybe why you think. I don't know. I, I've been trying to pay attention to things you've been saying about some of these teams. So some of them I was like, all right, let's get it. All right. Uh, Kansas City versus Baltimore. Ravens are winning it. 
Okay, uh, Green Bay versus Philadelphia. <laughs> Man, that's a tough fucking game already. Uh, I'm going to say Eagles. Okay, uh, Atlanta versus the Steelers. Atlanta. Okay, uh, Buffalo versus Arizona. Buffalo. Buffalo. Tennessee versus Chicago. Chicago. Bengals versus the New England Patriots. Bengals. Bengals. Texans versus the Colts. Texans. Jaguars Always versus Texans. the Dolphins. Jaguars. Uh, Saints versus the Panthers? Saints. Uh, Ooh, my, that's a tough one, though. That's a tough mm, one, damn. though. I'll put, a, I'll put a little dot next to that. Uh, Vikings versus Giants. Vikings. No. Yeah, Vikings. Okay. Uh, Chargers versus Raiders. Chargers. Uh, Denver versus Seahawks. Seahawks. Uh, Dallas versus the Browns. The Browns always go against Cowboys. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, Washington versus Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Uh, Lions versus the Rams. Lions. And then <laughs> the Jets versus the 49ers. <laughs> I don't want to do that one. No, I don't. Do I have to do my team? No, nah. uh, you know what? I wrote down the team I think that you want to win. And we don't have to talk about them. So actually, I did fairly well. I, I almost want to say the Jets, though, because... Uh, okay. Trent and Ayuka are only going to have one week of practice. Oh, I guess that's a fair point. Okay, so I actually... He's, he's back, too, so he's only got one week of practice, I, but... I actually only got four of those wrong. And well, the Jets are really good defense, so... I don't con know. Considering I know not really nothing about these teams, getting only four of those wrong, well, compared to your opinion, is not bad. I had the Kansas City Chiefs winning, but uh, that might just be because I, I don't really like the Ravens. <laughs> No, the Ravens still have a good defense, which okay. <laughs> I talked about this with Trevor earlier this week. Without Patrick Queen being in the lineup since he went to the Steelers, I don't know if the Ravens are going to have the number one defense this okay. year. Because to me, Queen was an absolute fucking animal. So for them to get rid of him was stupid. Um, but they shouldn't have lost last year in the playoffs right right so i don't disagree i think they're hungry i think they're hungry i guess and that's fair their they're, first game being the chiefs be pumped. they're, they're be fucking pumped. hungry yeah oh, I'd, I'd come out ready to fucking kill yeah, them yeah. Just saying. um i had green bay winning uh like i said now, i don't know a whole lot about the eagles i haven't really heard you talk about the eagles all that much but i've heard you they're say still good stacked things on offense okay. i mean they got Chacon, uh barkley Chacon okay. barkley okay as their new running back uh plus I don't know. It, this is gonna be. It's gonna be a slaughter fest. I think it's. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a low score game, in my opinion. Okay. Um. I had Denver. Now I don't. Now, hold on. The only reason I picked. De I thought you were gonna pick Denver is because I know you don't like the Seahawks. So I just sort of figured you like your, your favorite. I mean, I want show. Denver to win. <laughs> I want Denver to win because Seahawks is in the Niners <laughs> division. But like. I just see, don't see him losing. See, some of them, some of them, like I said, I was a little like, who do I think he'd want to win? Because I don't know. So I would choose the team that I figured you'd want them to win. So, and then I, and I do see the Cowboys actually winning. I'm gonna say, okay. Well, but, see, I picked the Browns because I knew you didn't like the Cowboys. So I'm now, always gonna go against the Cowboys because fuck the Cowboys. So now the Washington Tampa Bay game. Funny story is I actually started writing Tampa Bay down, and I went, no, 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 I meant to write Washington. So I had Washington for that one. Now, I don't know, like I said, that those are two teams I don't really know a whole lot about, so I just sort of, I should have won with my know. gut, I don't though. feel like, I don't, that one's, it's probably going to be another low-score game, unless Mayfield goes off, which could be possible. Okay, and then you said the Saints... Which, Saints and the Panthers. Yeah, you said you. It's a division. That's a division game, and Week One starting off kind of sucks doing a division game. Like they're in the same division, so it's like I don't. Know, I don't understand that one. But the reason I said, "Ooh, that might be tough," after I thought about it, was Carolina added some weapons to their offense. So okay, it might Fair. be a really good game. That that might be a hell of a game to watch. All right.
right. Well, um, I think we need to bring something up real quick too. Eagles and Packers being a Friday game. That is fucking wild. That man. is wild. I forgot all about that. Because I, when I was writing my list for the podcast, I was like, Friday? I said, when did we start doing Friday games? I was so confused. <laughs> but you know what? It's another day for people to watch football, so I... Yeah, we got four <laughs> days straight of know, football. That's we got awesome. Thursday night football, Friday night football, then you got college football, and then you got Sunday. Sunday. All right. <clears throat> ding, 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 ding. Are we done talking NFL? Yeah, we're good. All right. All right. Now we're going to go on to Beyond the Bell. This is our WWE segment. Um, This is going to take us a while to get through. And there's a pay-per-view either coming up the week or following. Like, the week, we're on the week following a pay-per-view. This is going to take a while to get through. Because we got to get through a pay-per-view as well as the Raw and the SmackDown. Previous Raw and SmackDown. So, we have about 30 minutes set aside for this. Hopefully after this week, until the next pay-per-view doesn't take us quite that long. But we actually have our little WWE expert. I mean, he's more definitely more well-versed than Chris and I are in WWE. He knows a little bit more. Um, hopefully he's ready. He's in here with us. Um, Jeff McSteamy is ready. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there he is. <laughs> So, uh, this is Ethan. This is my brother. So now it's turned into a, a husband, wife, brother podcast. But no, he's our little WWE expert. Um, so Ethan, I don't know if you did, did you, uh, listen to the podcast at all from last week? Uh, no, I did not actually. Okay. So I meant to, but I never ba did. Basically what we do is I use Bleacher Report. I like the way their website's set up. And I just look at the results from the Raw and the SmackDown that, that are from like, like, I have Monday Night Raw from this past week. I have last week's Friday Night SmackDown. And I also have Bash in Berlin. And we talk about them in order. And we talk about, like I said, I like the way they have their stuff set up. They go in order of the matches. And we just kind of talk about the matches. Sometimes we don't have a whole lot to say. but um, Yeah, I mean, some weeks are going to be pretty boring. Yeah, I mean, it's starting off pretty strong, though, I will say. We're going to start with SmackDown, Friday Night SmackDown of last week. This is the pre-Bash in Berlin Friday Night Smackdown, so you know it's going to be good. <laughs> He's pointing at his Liv Morgan. All right, first match of the night. Yeah. L.A. Knight versus Ludwig. What were our thoughts on that? Dumb. <laughs> dumb. It was dumb, it was in my opinion. It was good because it was L.A. Knight, but that's about... <laughs> Yeah, it was a it was a mid it was a mid card match. I think they, I I like LA Knight, but the whole I don't know. I just they I graded it. They uh, this is another thing I like about Bleacher Report is they grade the matches. Then and I like that they said it was a B grade match, which I I could agree with that. Yeah, I mean it was a good match. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, right. I, I just I know Ethan likes Kaiser, they're, but I'm just I'm yeah, starting to get a little like old. That. I'm starting yeah. to get like get he's I don't know a dick. Um, well, in the way they worded it, and I agree with it, this was a solid competitive match, but it was also somewhat paint by numbers. I think that's a great way to describe it. It was. It we knew we knew who was gonna win. We knew the title wasn't changing. Like Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I'm an LA Knight <laughs> fucking fanatic because he's from Hagerstown. He's actually born in Hagerstown. I know he's LA Knight, but he was born in Hagerstown. It's just like three hours down the road. So not right. even LA three Knight hours. Yeah. Like, well, give or take. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, okay. that's a good reason. That's a great <laughs> reason to like the wrestler because he's just so you know he's so local to us. Yeah, he's pretty local. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The fucking catchphrase is fucking <laughs> dope too. Like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. When he when he's on the he has great mic skills. Well, they they say he's our he's our modern day attitude era guy, and I I agree. He's very he's very witty too. Like he yes. comes up, you can tell he comes up with shit on the fly. You can tell, yeah. right? Yeah, he's he's very yeah. good. He he is. So speaking of matches, we probably won't talk a whole lot about Apollo Cruz and Baron Corbin versus Angel and Birdo. Um, I didn't watch this match. I wasn't even paying attention. Uh, neither did yeah, I. Yeah, no. To be I, I, Sorry, it wasn't. It wasn't. I'll I'll be straight up and just say that 
SmackDown has been kind of lackluster yeah, lately. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Raw yeah. Monday Night Raw is definitely superior. Oh like, yeah, I would right now. like I I don't really pay attention to Friday Night SmackDown, and I hate to say that. But when Monday Night Raw comes on, I'm like, yeah, Monday Night oh, Raw. Like, pull in Monday Night Raw, dude. Monday. Which, you're going to have that, though. I mean. Yeah, yeah you're going to happen... prefer, a, like, a, I, I don't want to say a faction, but you're going to prefer one faction over the other. So. And I've noticed with WWE in the second half of the year, it, it's kind of lackluster. After SummerSlam. Like, which makes sense, but. From it, SummerSlam to Royal Rumble, it's kind of right. Yeah, and I'll admit, Bash in Berlin was actually pretty, pretty. It decent was no Bash in Berlin was was pretty good. I agree. Um, so. Carmelo Hayes versus Andrade. That was another that match was. that I, I. I've been watching this one. Um, just because I I actually do, I'm starting to like Andrade a little bit because mm -hmm. of who he is and. He's like a respectful. He's a respectful wrestler. Like oh yeah, he's, he's, he's a pretty decent wrestler. And well, yeah, and like well, by respectful, I mean like he's he's really friends with everybody in the locker room. Right. So when he fights, he fights respectful. So but you you fucking be a dick like hit Carmelo Hayes has been. He's gonna be pissed. So and he defeats him. Now they're two and two. They're both two and two against each other, so I don't know. It's it's kind of one of those matches. I think it's just kind of like a you're trying to make a rival out of something that it's just gonna fall flat, right? But yeah, I'm getting kind of tired of that one already too. Well, I, I was confused when Randy Orton went over to Raw because I was like, they were hyping this Kevin Owens and Randy Orton tag team, and then oh, well, here's Randy on Raw. <laughs> Which makes, yeah, which makes we're all superior now. I mean, it was superior before, but now it's really superior. <laughs> Megan would agree. <laughs> um, and then Nia Jax versus Mishin. However you pronounce her name. Sorry. I'm, I didn't even know who the fuck Mishin was. <laughs> yeah, I I like that it was a street fight. It is rare to see street fights in the women's division. So I did like that. Real, I was like, who the fuck is Mishin? And I was like, and yeah. then I seen her. I was like, the only reason that I knew who Mishin was then was because I played WWE. Speaking <laughs> of WWE 2K24 or whatever the fuck it's called, it's uploaded today. It's uploaded every Wednesday. I call it, what do I call it, Alex? I don't uh, remember. WWE WW Wednesday. Oh, WWE that's right. WWE Wednesday. The ends day. I'm just tired of Nia Jax. I don't like her. Oh. You see me? I know you do. I know you do. I just we didn't watch that match too much. I I can't remember. I was doing something. I don't even remember. But Well, the reason I don't like Nia Jax is because um, I started watching wrestling there... What was it like a year and a half ago, probably? Yeah, so I started a little right. bit before because I know Alex really, she didn't really watch it a lot with me. And I started again before you guys really got into it. And I just, I don't know, I just, I didn't like her then because of how, who she was. And then it just, it just I escalates. I from don't there. really necessarily like Nia Jax, but I don't really like, I'm just sort of like mid with I like, like, I like Piper more than Nia. Did, so, okay. Didn't Tiffany Stratton almost cash in? She did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Which that would have made that match like, whoa, right, like. Because <laughs> Meg, because I think I was making dinner, but yeah, Megan came over. She was like, "Oh my god, Tiffany Stratton almost <laughs> cashed in." Yeah, they, they did mention that, but they said I guess Nia saw her before she could cash it in, and Tiff, Tiffy decided, "Uh, better not." <laughs> yeah. Which that was probably smart. Which, to be fair, she she actually came out to help Nia Jax. She did. Hit her in the head, hit Mishin with the, the, briefcase. The, the briefcase, kind of knocked her out. But Nia was still laying there. She was like, wait a minute. I could do this right now. Yeah, which that would have been a good time to do it, I guess. So she really came out to help her, then just, you know, that little, that little devil on your shoulder. Hey, do it. Yeah, yeah, Someone yeah, exactly. What do you um, think, Evan? <laughs> uh, 
Um, so, okay, now we're moving on to Bash at Berlin. Uh, Cody Rhodes versus Kevin Owens. We were we were actually shocked that they started with that match. We were just like, I oh, was. We're, we're starting with this match, okay. Um, Which makes sense, though. Right, because, I mean, every, they're in Germany. <laughs> Gunther's Austrian, yeah, so it's like... Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Hype, hype up this match. So, huh, side note for our podcast listeners, I missed this match. I went to see my, my <laughs> oldest daughter cheerlead. <laughs> and these two motherfuckers <laughs> oh my god did you see that oh my god you missed it oh my god that was the best match ever and i was like what's going on somebody tell me and they're like you just gotta watch it and here i am scrolling wwe like oh my god where is it and i'm like i don't understand what i missed these motherfuckers <sighs> it was nothing, it was nothing. <laughs> um i'm just glad cody rhodes won yeah, I mean, I figured he was going to. I did too. I did you too. Hype up, you hype up this man I for think... two years to win the Royal Rumble. I really want to see Kevin Owens win, win though. I want him to win something, please. Well, that's how that's how I am with Jay. Please. Oh, so, for the record, at Bachelor Berlin, I went three for two. I was three and two. I guessed three matches correctly. This one I guessed correctly. I guessed Cody Rhodes. Yeah, I think it's on the last podcast too. We did, we did the. I believe. I could um, be wrong. All right, next match was the women's tag team title match: uh, Jay Cargrill and Bianca versus the Unholy Uni- Union. The worst match of the night. Uh, it, Fuck yeah, that shit. I, we, we, I like the Unholy Union. I like uh, what the hell's her name? Alba F- Fire. Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. Yeah. yeah. Isla Dawn. I like fire. I don't know. For some reason, I love her accents. I'm like, I'm full out fucking Isla Fire all the way. My only question, and maybe, maybe somebody, somebody who knows something can explain this to me, but I thought when the team, when someone lost their title, they were allowed a rematch. Now, is it because it's traded hands back to the original people that they have to do a contender's Probably, match? Probably, or... because they did a triple threat. The problem, the problem with Unholy Union winning is they won it in a triple threat, so maybe that's maybe why that they, they don't why. get a a rematch. They don't get a rematch. Yeah, they sense. have to show that they're a contender. They have to get through a contenders match. I guess I didn't think about that. Which I can't wait to get to that match from Raw because that shit was wild. <laughs> we'll, let's just get through Bash of Berlin. Um, but yes, I like I like Isla Dawn and Fire. I really like Fire a lot, so I'm team fucking Unholy. Uh, also, I, I learned that Unholy was another reason why I liked them is they came from NXT, but they were like apparently they were really dominant tag team members. So it's nice to see a, a dominant tag team, a woman's tag team coming through again. Yeah, I, I agree. Cool. I agree. Because it's usually you know singles who come through. Yeah, it's usually singles, but this is a this is an actual tag this team. This was a tag right. team. I, li- yeah. I like yeah. that. You don't see that too often with the NXT drafting. It's- so that makes sense. Um, this was my match. This is the only match I cared about was CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre strap match. This is the only match I really cared about. I figured CM Punk was gonna win. I it. did too. I was hoping. I wouldn't have been upset either way, but I was hoping for CM. I knew Punk. he was winning. So I, I had Cody Rhodes winning. I had the Unholy Union winning. So I was one for one, and then I had Punk winning because he's had to get his bracelet back. I mean, yes, I, I just knew I, that was crazy. Unfortunately, and he never lost strap match. If you've heard him from before, they never lost, so he's not going to lose. Like, uh, unfortunately, I like their trash talk. Like I said last week, I really enjoy the trash talk. I enjoy this rivalry, but it's getting a little old. And so, strap match should have done it. And but there we go again. Yeah, let's let's continue yeah. on with bash before we get too crazy. Yeah. Um, the mixed tag team match, Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest versus Liv and Dominic. Oh. Uh, that one was pretty I good. I, I knew who was going to win. Sorry. Like, I oh, wanted... Yeah. yeah. I, I knew Livy was losing. I, I'm going to have to wash my mouth out after saying this, but I was hoping that Dominic and Liv were going to win. But I was... We all I, knew she wasn't. But we knew Livy she had wasn't. To lose. So, I'm going to have to wash my mouth out now after to saying that. To be fair, that. though... Liv Morgan always wins. 
She's and got Chris, music yes, fan. I was gonna say yes. Chris is in love with her, so that's all right. That's all right. She always wins. She's got me as a fan. I'm team live. All I don't care if she's heel or not. She's she's a winner in my book. <laughs> and then I don't know, man. Some of the faces she makes sometimes were like <laughs> she is so weird. She is. She is very. Oh, I will agree. <laughs> And then, uh, last but not, but definitely not least. Fuck this. Fuck this match. This Orton... fucking thing. This pissed me the fuck off. <laughs> Orton versus Gunther. I'm upset because, obviously, because Randy lost. I'm not surprised that Gunther won, but. I was. I actually was surprised because Randy Orton should hold that title. I agree. I agree. One more time. And that's. What was you... Wait, what was that, Ethan? Hold it one more time. I mean. Ethan's a Gunther fan, so for him to say that, man. Yeah, yeah. I know. I hate you right now. One of my one of my top five right now, and but, yeah. and again, the only reason I was I was actually pissed off about is Gunther held the title. He's held gold eighty percent of his career, so now you're just upping that. I mean, come right. on, dude. Like Randy built the WWE. I mean, he helped. I don't say built, but he helped build well, the he, WWE. No, he, he should have won. It. He did. I agree. So. For him to lose that was uh, just not good. You know what? I know Megan will agree with me on this, Ethan, but anytime Randy Orton's in the ring is a win for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw it when he plans to retire, um, but I saw 2029. Okay, so we well, he's got a while to... He's getting that belt, uh, baby. I said it oh, last yeah. week. I, I think I said it last week. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, but I'm going to get Ethan's opinion. Quite honestly, I hope Randy Orton breaks the the title record for as, mm. however many times he's held it. I hope he breaks it. Yeah. Because I love John Cena. Love him. And I love Ric Flair, but fuck the both of them for Randy Orton. <laughs> I feel like... So here's my theory. I feel like... Gunther's gonna lose the next PB, the next pay per view. He's gonna lose he's next pay per view. Lose. He's gonna lose the title, and it it's tough to say. Isn't I don't it? know. <laughs> well, I don't know who's actually gonna be the number one contender. Right. I mean, right. It's kind of like, well, who's next? So I feel like he's gonna lose it, and then that's when Randy's gonna take it. Mm. Mm hmm. Good match, regardless. Though I did enjoy. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was a damn good match, dude. Holy hell! I mean, I, I always, I always know Randy Orton's going to be phenomenal in a match. I just didn't like the ending. Right, the ending sucked, but the whole thing was good. Oh, and uh, podcast news as well. Uh, I did talk to Ethan about possibly doing a pay per view live on Discord. So how that would work. I can explain to Ethan a lot better on Discord here. Is we're just gonna go live on our voice. I, I'll go live with video too, but we can't show audio or show the video. We can't show listen to the audio. You're just gonna have to see our reactions. We can tell you the winners of the match, but right. uh, I think it'd be fun to have like live reactions. So just yeah, heads up. It might not be next pay per view, but it's gonna be one of the pay per views. Right. I and think then, it'll be fun. And I know I know we have plans to to be together for Royal Rumble, so are we planning on that? Oh hell oh, yeah. Hell That'll yeah. That'll be fun. Um oh. Alright, moving on to Monday Night Raw, this past Monday Night Raw. Uh first match was Otis, uh Tazawa and Maxine versus American Maid. Otis, Otis, Otis. We love, love us some Otis. Give the camera. But before we hold on, before we get to that, we got to remember that Rhea Ripley came out first. She got her ass beat. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, we right. know. Like, we we Liv know. beat the fuck out of her. Well, she got caught in the ropes and then Liv beat the fuck out of her. All <laughs> right. And <laughs> then. <laughs> yeah. But. And the whole OTs thing, I love. Okay, so I didn't know this about Maxine Dupree, which made me love her even more. She was actually a St. Louis Rams. St. Louis Rams cheerleader. So that was like back in the day because now they're Los Angeles Rams. Right. Uh, so for her to make a transition between cheerleader 
and WWE star, I fucking love that because she's she's very athletic. Yeah, yeah. And right. you, I mean, if you actually start watching her matches, like watch her perform, she's incredible. So, well, she's been getting shit. Like I've noticed, I've noticed them in like making her get better at wrestling. Yes. Which yes. yes. We were we were impressed too. We were like, oh my god, she's doing really good. But if you wonder where her agility comes from, I see Clearly. a lot of moves. It's come from Cheerleading. and that's I'm like, smart, that's yeah. a nice transition. Uh-huh. Um, but the whole the whole Alpha Academy with with Otis and Cesaro, oh dude, I love Cesaro, dude. They're such a great tag team. I love them. I know. I they're they're just a whole like. I don't care if they win. They're a whole lot of fun, and right. I like that. I, love I, Otis. I like, like to see. Yes. I love his caterpillar move, the little worm. Yes. Oh my god! Like <laughs> yeah. they're they're just fan favorites. They're fun to watch. So when they win, it's, it's great. I like to go on and try and do the worm on WWE. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> remember, that, remember heads up. Yes. Oh my god, that was so funny. Well, I know the restaurant. It was after, so American Made did defeat. Yes. Alpha Academy. Yes. Right. So and after that, I believe uh, Chad Chad Gable. He called out the white six in a uh, street fight yeah, match. And I, I feel like he's going to get killed. Uh, yeah, he's going yeah. to die. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're going to murder him. <laughs> he's going to die. Um, like, and I, I don't want to make no assumptions, but it'd be awesome to see Bliss come back. Just saying. I know, and we're we're waiting for it. We are waiting for yeah. it. So, but um, regarding that, I like what they're doing with the Wyatt six because they they're just. They're OP. They should they're, be. They're OP, which they should be, because they're supernatural. So, uh, right. I actually have a question for you, Ethan. We talked about it last week, and while we're on the topic, so we obviously we know Wyatt Six is not going to be undefeated. Now, Chris has his own theory about Wyatt Six being undefeated, and then they just disappear. Do you uh, think, yeah. who do you think's going to, if anyone does beat the Wyatt Six, who do you think it's going to be? Uh, I it, that's that's tough, isn't it? Yeah, and, that, and that's I, what I, I was can... saying. I don't think they're gonna lose. And that's yeah. yeah. I feel like their next personally. target is gonna be Judgment Day. Which yeah, I mean, the actual not the yeah. Terror Twins, the actual not Judgment the Day. Twins, yeah, like no. Finn Balor and JD McDonald. Yeah, because uh-huh. I mean they did betray their that's brothers. That's true. That's true. I guess I forgot their whole thing was betrayal. I well, forgot and that, about that. That was my theory, though. I, I said, my theory is the Y6 is coming to destroy these OP the groups. They're gonna go for They're going to go for Judgment Day first, then they're going to go for the Bloodline, and then they're just going to disappear, because their work's done. Yeah, and I... That's what their work I is like for. I like that. I like that. But, if they do lose, it's probably going to be to some... Yeah, yo. No, nobody knows him. Like, I feel It'll like, be like a just, weird, yeah. I feel like this, that's how WWE writes their shit. However, to be fair, McMahon's not part of it no more, so that might not be the case. Yeah, right. I was going to yeah, say... Triple H does a pretty damn good I job. I was going to say, that. Triple H has been doing a damn good job. But I'm just so saying, because, like, how Undertaker lost to a fucking idiot, like, in my opinion. Yeah, if they right. were going to make him lose to someone, it, it, CM Punk would have been a better choice, in my opinion. I wouldn't go that far, but... Well, I... <laughs> I thought Kane would have been a fucking good oh, one. Kane would have been, been great. Perfect. Kane would have been phenomenal. Listen, I, I'm... I'm a semi writer, so like for me to like write stories comes kind of natural. So why the fuck would you not have your own brother take you out WrestleMania? Right. That shit would have been fucking hilarious. That'd have been great, and I right. don't think people would have been upset. But I feel like a lot of people would have been like, you know, that oh, makes sense. Like, whenever yeah. I found out, yeah. whenever I found out that Brock beat Undertaker, I was upset just I was upset so like, this is who they got <laughs> I was, to, to i him. was like, so really? i was so mad i said it was there then for- i was like and then years later i was like man if bray wyatt would have been able to do oh, it oh my god yes bray would have been an excellent um okay moving on <laughs> uh the next match on raw was Zelina vega versus Shayna baszler mommy number two mommy number two yes you gotta call Zelina mommy because she hit you with the slipper. That's right. That, uh, but, Baszler defeats. I'm getting oh. so pissed with the fucking pure fusion whatever collective. Fuck that is. <laughs> you should hear what I call them. 
Oh no. The lesbians. Oh yeah, that's a, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, les, the unified lesbian coalition is what I call them. To be fair, Shayna Baszler did just get married. She is a lesbian. That's Liv Morgan's like best friend. So, congratulations to uh, uh no not Earth, Shayna yeah Earth. no Sonya uh, Deville. Deville Sonya Deville that's who I was trying to think of Sonya Deville sorry yeah, I was reading they, yeah Shayna Baszler and uh, Meechan are actually really good friends I didn't know that yeah I see oh on TikTok all the time I see uh them doing videos together it's kind of funny Ethan have you seen the videos I can't remember what the girl's name is. But Damien Priest is in all her videos, and he just looks oh, yeah, so no, unamused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> what the heck is her name? It starts with who, a K. It starts with yeah. a K. And I can't think of her damn... I can see her, but I can't think of her name. But he looks so unamused in all her videos, and I love it. I think it's so He's funny. There. He's just there. Oh, yeah. He's just there. <laughs> uh, with with Baszler, the whole, that whole crew being up Vega, it just, it's just getting old, man. Yeah. Like... Hopefully Vega can come out with a... They do her dirty, and I think they shouldn't. I, I no, like Vega. She's a really good wrestler. <clears throat> and, her, and she's another one that her mic skills are really good. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's... Wow, I mean... <laughs> it's Vega. She's been around for a minute, too. So Hell yeah. But, like, her being Latina has a lot to do with that, dude. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, well, okay, mommy, I'm gonna listen. Don't hit me with your fucking slipper, dude. <laughs> Relax. Honestly, surprised. Uh, who who's the third member? What can't uh, Zoe, Zoe Stark? Stark. I can't believe yeah. she's a wrestler. She botches all the time. I I just this is gonna sound very ignorant, but this is a podcast. This is what I'm here for. Alex wants me here for a reason. Oh, Here's God. the reason. I do not like Shanna Baszler's voice. It is so fucking annoying. It's like Becky Lynch's voice. It's so annoying. Chris, it, like, it, like, it's like when I look at her face and I hear her voice, I get insta annoyed. Insta annoyed. So, sorry, I just I have to throw that out there. That's one reason why I just I can't get behind Baszler. She was in know. she was in a UFC before, wasn't she? I think so. Yeah, cause her I don't know if Baszler was. I know Ronda Rousey was. Well, I thought that's why they they were like a tag team, because they were both in that. I could be wrong. I don't know. I think she was a kickboxer. But like I don't know if she was yeah, or at least kickboxing of some sort. I don't know if she was ever in the UFC. She might have been, but I'm not I'm not saying she wasn't. I'm just Um The next thing that happened was the CM Punk promo where we thought it was all over and here comes Drew McIntyre. Oh, yeah. So but we, it finally got rid of that damn bracelet. I know. Uh, and then it was Dragon Lee versus Dragon Off versus Mysterio. Which I, honest to God, I didn't really care too much about that match. I. We actually did watch that match. And... So here it is. She did try to get in the UFC, but she went 0-2. Fun fact. So oh, sorry. Okay. She pulled a CM Punk. She pulled a CM Punk! Oh my <laughs> God. She was trained by Josh Barnett as a former UFC fighter. And then she went to a reality television series, The Ultimate Fighter. She would go on to have two professional bouts, 0-2, in the company. In 2015, she was cut from the UFC and started her professional wrestling career. Oh, okay. So. But yeah, I just want to look that up, because, like... Yeah, I was say, uh, thanks for bearing she looks like She looks like someone that would be in the UFC. <laughs> she does. No, she does. She looks, she looks like a rough-cut woman. I don't... <laughs> that that triple threat match that was a that was for the that was, that was for the contender, for contender match, match yeah okay or a tournament or whatever they're doing um for the intercontinental for uh Who what's his name people uh Dra- it was dragon, dragon, lee, dragon lee uh dragon. dominic and dominic yeah dragon lee dragon off and dominic yeah okay yeah dragon off that's right well we were when we were watching we were like we kind of wanted Dragon Lee to win because we were like, you know, he never gets anything. No, he doesn't. Yeah, which is I kind of figured Dragonoff was going to win though. Yeah, he's a, that's what I was thinking when they were coming out. Like, I feel like he's going to win this because you know he's one of the, he was one of the big hyped yeah NXT uh, people. Which I mean, I like his wrestling so far. He's doing a good job, I think. He's doing better than Carmelo Hayes. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. Um, damage control versus the unholy union. I know Chris mentioned this when we were talking about Bash of Berlin. Oh yeah. So, like a, sick of it. <laughs> I am sick of it. Again, I'm I'm glad unholy won. Yeah. But that I cut was 100 real. Oh my I, god, I, was I reading an about article. that. And it was it, it apparently happens a lot. It was just an eyelid. The eyelid, I guess she cut her eyelid. Oh. That's why her eye was red. It looked worse than it was, she said. She did get stitches, but it was worse than... It looked worse than what it was. It really that's wasn't, That's because it was yeah. her eyelid, so there was a lot of... It was just a lot of blood. Right. But that also makes your eye red, so it looked like there was, like, yeah, tons of blood really, when it really it wasn't. It really bad. Um, but I was like, dude, holy fuck, that was real. Because I actually... You could tell when it happened. It was when, uh... uh one of the either Dawn or Fire came up from the rope from the outside and like came down. You could see her hit her eye off the side of the like the corner yeah. of the whatever they call that on the, the outside of the, the apron. Rope. The apron. It, yeah, the apron. Yeah. She you could see her like she hit the corner. She didn't hit the mat, she hit the corner. And I'm like, dude, I had to hurt. When I see blood, I'm like, oh fuck. Because <laughs> oh, I, 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 I was I was Looking on my phone for some, uh, something, and then I looked up, I'm like, oh my god, there's blood everywhere. <laughs> yeah, she hit the corner. She hit the corner of the apron, and I was like, oh yeah. Because, uh, to be fair, if you hit any corner, it's going to hurt like a bitch. Right. Because like, they're, cause they're like, that's where like the tension is for everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that had to hurt like a bitch. Um, the next thing that happened was Sami Zayn coming out. To face <laughs> Look, I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this. I can't wait to read if we get any comments because they're gonna all be hating on me. Uh Sami Zayn was needed in the bloodline. I think that whole bloodline storyline needed Sami Zayn, but I think Sami Zayn should be done. I love I Sa- agree. I love oh, Sami Zayn. I was, like, I was like, oh my god, this again. I, I love Sami Zayn. I love that he's so well loved and I and whatever, but I think he's finally passed. His prime, like it's one thing. And I, love, I love it. I still love his entrance. So he comes out like he's on ADHD. Uh, yes, or something. He, he's I don't a lot get of it. Fun. No, he's a time. lot of fun, but he's. And that's also annoying. They're putting, like you're not that hyped up no well, more, dude. Relax. I think my issue it's not so much that he. I don't. I think he needs to retire. I don't think he necessarily needs to retire. I think they need to stop putting re-brand him in such him. serious matches. Right. They need to rebrand him. Yeah, like Otis comes out, and Otis doesn't really care if he wins or loses. He's yeah, out there having fun. There. That's what they need to do with Sammy. They need to put him in fun shit rather than because he's got more energy for that. I think. That's just my opinion. I will say though. Out of all the male wrestlers, he's probably one of the most entertaining in he the is. ring. No, he is. He definitely is. He's such a good actor. Like, when you knock him out, he's like... Yeah, oh, like, I know. Out. He's, like, he's good. Like, he's pretty good at what he does, I will say. But I agree. He needs to be... Adios. Yeah, I... I don't necessarily think... But I like did. the fact that Gunter turned him down, dude. I, I know! Uh, <laughs> that no. was funny. Uh, no. <laughs> that was funny. Um, the next match was the last contenders match for Intercontinental. It was Strowman, Sheamus, and Ludwig. Um, sorry, yeah, but she- Sheamus, Sheamus is my babe. So, of course, I was going for him. However, I'm glad Strowman won. So... Uh- their new commentator i can't remember his name off the top of my head and he was like oh i know, oh, I know he's watching this somewhere <laughs> going there's that big sob <laughs> <laughs> i was like no you gotta say it you're like, big son of a bitch <laughs> yeah i i i love braun Strowman. i think he's great yeah I, I like him too yeah yeah um, he's honestly i mean obviously he was with Bray Wyatt, which was a great start for him, but he's still wearing like the explorer of the pants too. too. Yeah. Um, last match of the night was Jey Uso, <laughs> Damien versus Finn and My JD God. McDonough. That was me awesome. And, me and Megan were so hyped oh for this. Oh my god, we because but Megan was using the bathroom and I was watching them do the, the promo <laughs> before and then Rhea was like, yeah, I got somebody. Oh <laughs> she did the As soon as she said, I was like, you on the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. I, heard, 
you can hear the crowd too. They're going, ye, 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 ye. <laughs> um, but, so. But I was like, Megan, Megan, get your ass out here. This, this match really reminded me of those damn TikToks where that girl is all like ecstatic and Damien's just like so unamused. That was the same energy I got from this match. Like Damien was just kind of there and just unamused by all of Jay's antics. But. <laughs> I love it. I do oh, too. I love it. After after they went off air for that match, they they were all doing the yeets. Oh my god, I love it. And it's not going to be weird for me to say this, but I like Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley more now yes. that they're not in the Judgment Day. Yes. So <laughs> I actually had my own thought about that because I thought the same. And thing. hey, time out. I gotta say one thing. Rhea fucking Ripley looked absolutely fine. On oh Monday. yeah, she did. She came, oh, Megan, Megan I've always yes. said that. Like I've always said, like she either looks like a man because of her. No offense to Rhea Ripley, her shoulders are just a little bit bigger than mine, so I get scared. Oh, I <laughs> and, but when she, her shoulders are covered, she came out, bro. She was looking mighty fine. I was like, damn. I was excited. She had a nice outfit on. Obviously, Priest. He's always the. What do they call him? The the. Gay Undertaker. The bisexual yeah. Undertaker. And he's Which not I'm even, okay with that. I I so I, I'm starting to like Priest because he got um, backstabbed by Finn. So, oh, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's good character development for him. So my opinion, and I'm going to totally, not totally go off track here. You'll understand the analogy. So Rhea Ripley, the Terror Twins, and Judgment Day, to me, and you guys are going to groan when you hear me say this, is sort of like One Direction for me. No, hold on. So, when Zayn Malik left the group, they got better, but Zayn by himself was also better. So, like, to me, that's where my brain goes. How do we kick her from the... Uh, Shut up! I mean, you're <laughs> the owner of the server, so... <laughs> so... It does say kick Juniper right here. Shut up! <sighs> <laughs> so the other thing we I don't do, even know who that is I know maybe someone watching or listening will understand my little analogy there um but anyways the next thing we usually do Ethan is I look up if there's any announced matches for the upcoming Raw and Smackdown they don't really no, have Smackdown because Raw won't have them no, actually, but Raw will have some. Yeah, I was going to say there's three matches confirmed for Raw, but there's Yeah, no because they're going to have Jay, Jay versus Braun, but, right? But there's nothing for SmackDown, believe it or not. I, they're going to have the, the number one contender well, matches next Monday. Yes, Um. so nothing for SmackDown, unfortunately. Nothing I can find that's pretty concrete. However, this website, there's three matches that have been confirmed First one is the Jade Cargrill and Bel Air versus the Unholy Union Three. Oh my God! I'm for so the sick of tag that. team title, yeah. Jade, Jade and them's winning that. I, I think, think they are they're, too. They're too hyped yeah. up. Uh, then the the. Well, I think it's fucked up that they're gonna win. They don't even have an intro together. Like, come on, bro! If yeah, you're like, a tag team, know. get an intro together. Fuck. <laughs> um. Then you have your Intercontinental title match, Strowman, Uso, Dunn, and Dragunov. That's a tough one. I would like to see Jay Uso win it. Oh, I'm I'm 100% rooting but, for Jay. But, I'm so sick of him getting screwed over. Uh, I am too. However, I'm kind of thinking ahead a little bit. I would rather see Strowman go against Breaker, though. I think that, that would, would be a good be a match. Awesome match off, dude. So I, I'm torn. If Jay wins I, it, I'll be yeah, ecstatic. Yeah, I, I am torn. Because I'm like, oh, man. But I, gotta, I, gotta uh, I would two. really like to see Strowman. <sighs> I said earlier that I'm a writer, so this is how I'd write it. Jey Uso wins it. Jey Uso goes for the title. Jey Uso is going to win the title. And lo and behold, Jimmy Uso shows up. <gasps> oh, I didn't uh, even think about Jimmy. Oh, my God. But this time, instead of Jimmy fucking his brother. He helps him. He helps him. Okay, okay, that's a... Him, Roman, him, Roman and the Jimmy get back together. Of the OG bloodline. The OG bloodline. Again. And they take back what was theirs. Without okay. Solo. Okay. Just saying. That's you how I'd write it. You all heard it here. <laughs> but all I'm saying is, if Jimmy would come out to fuck Jey Uso, 
I wouldn't be surprised either. Well, no, <laughs> but, no, right. but that's um, how I'd go for it. And then the only other match that they have confirmed is the Wyatt Six versus American Made, the street fight, the eight person street fight. Yeah, that's gonna eight be fun. Eight person street fight is gonna be wild. That's is that the main event? That has to be the main event, right? I, There's no way. I, it that's doesn't not say. The main event. It doesn't say. The eight person oh, street fight, like bro, that's you can get. Be fun. Whoa. We're gonna have There's fun gonna be next trash week. cans flying everything, and like kendo sticks breaking, and trash cans, table smash. Ch- Chad Gable's gonna be flying through the air. <laughs> well, I said trash cans. Oh, okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> oh, and back to the Braun Strowman, the whole match. If Braun Strowman wins, I can see fucking what the hell Bronson Reed coming out and fucking him. Yeah, that's. So yeah, that's, I, I wouldn't doubt that happening. I wouldn't be surprised if he came out during this that contenders match. That was a fun match. fucking match to watch, though, by the way. That was Holy fun. fuck, was that a fun match. Yeah. That was fun. I agree. That was it. That's that's everything for... Unless someone wants to say something real quick about something that's WWE-related. That was it. That's all I had. No, but Livy Morgan's life is all I gotta say. Wyatt Six is doing fantastic. Agreed. And we want bliss. We want bliss. Yes, we, we want, want bliss. bliss. We like, want Like, speak bliss. it into fucking, what is that? Existence. Existence. We were, are manifesting it. Oh, um, yeah, what if she comes out during this eight-person street fight? I don't know in what capacity, but what if she does? Twisted bliss. Oh. I, yeah, I don't know how I, that I would. love her moveset. I, lo- I just love her moveset. If she keeps the same ones, of course. Uh-huh. But, I don't see why she wouldn't. But, uh, you know. She keeps hinting. She keeps hinting. Like, I'm just... Well, hold on. Before we end it real quick, let me go to her Twitter. Uh... Be right back. There, a couple weeks ago... A couple weeks ago, August 23rd, actually, she posted a Twitter... Twaler. Twaler Swift. <laughs> uh, Taylor Swift meme... And says, are you ready for it? Like, I don't know what that means. But, like... You think that's a sign of returning? Uh, I want to say it is. And then... On her Instagram... She posted a photo of her in her outfit... And put miss her, like bro. Just saying, that's hints. That is hints. Yeah, all lots the way. of lots of little, uh, little like drops, little Easter eggs. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see if she comes when when she comes back. Not if she comes back. When she comes back, because we're manifesting that. All right, so we're gonna have to end it anyway. So I want to again shout out if you want to watch this live, Twitch.tv slash Murdoch Gamer. Um, if you're are watching on YouTube, this is the logo right here on the hat. That's why I wore it today. This is my logo, Murdoch Gaming. That'll be YouTube is Murdoch Gaming. Twitch is twitch.tv slash Murdoch Gamer. And Spotify is, what's it? Go ahead, Alex. You go ahead and plug in a Spotify. What's, it's called the Overtime Podcast. The Overtime Podcast. Um, if you're on YouTube, I do put a link in the description, though. There is a link in the description that takes you right to the podcast page on Spotify. So, like Which, and follow that. Um, do you app? Do you happen to have the st- statistics from uh, that? No, but if if YouTube doesn't mind, well, actually, no. Hold on, I'll get it on on this what was PC. The podcast called? Well, what was that, Ethan? Uh, what was the podcast called? Overtime, the Overtime Podcast. Okay. And we named it the Overtime, which is kind of a bland name, but I figured it sounded good because me and Alex are literally working overtime for this podcast. Like, she's working two jobs, making a schedule for a podcast, plus going to school, by the way. And I'm working a fucking hellacious 50 plus hour week job in the sun. So we're definitely we working overtime. Um, so as of right now, we only have... Our first one, episode did. One episode. We only have one episode. But so far, we're at seven plays. Five people have listened to it. We have four followers. So, it's something. It's, it's you know, it's... Gotta start somewhere. Yep, exactly. So... 
Why can I not find it? I can... Dude, I'll send you the link. So just send me the link. I don't know why it's not coming up. It's... Uh, there's a... Actually... And I don't understand how to follow it. What do you, How do you follow something like that? Um... um I think you just click on it. I... Yeah, there's a follow it once you click on it. Oops. I saved it. I don't know what that means. No, that should... That should take you to it, Ethan. Yeah, and then you hit listen. Okay. I think I'm following. Oh, there it is. Ha ha! Now you got another follower. Woohoo! I see how you follow it now. Rate the show. I already rated it. Cool. It's. I think it sucks. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna also um get some new. I'm gonna have Alex make us a background so we're not blurred all the time. Our custom background for Discord. We're also going to maybe switch up a couple other little things, but. Again, thank you guys for listening to the podcast. Week two is done. Hope to see you guys listen to it. And again, this will be uploaded on Friday. Uh, Spotify will be Thursday. Alex wants to upload it Thursday, which is totally fine. I'll figure it Thursday out. Thursday at 6 a.m. Yep. So. I just have to type in your name. Anything else anybody want to add? Nope. Any plugs? That's it. Nope. Chef Mix 2024, baby. <laughs> See you next Wednesday, everybody. Peace.